Today we're going to look at how to make a simple stool. There are various types of fillings that a stool can be made of and it will affect the price, uh, especially if you're buying it, but if you're making it, it will more affect the time that it takes you to produce it. There's a traditional filling, which of course is the hair and scrim um, and with a stitched edge. And that sort of stool, you know, 50 years, the inside would last on that. Um, it will be a reasonably firm stool, but you do need to use a frame of this type with a, a very solid beach uh, deep edge if you're going to do a traditional stool. Um, I'm, st I'm still going to use one of these frames and I'm going to demonstrate um, just a simple foam stool. Again, with a foam filling, there's lots of different ways you can produce uh, the filling. Uh, you can manage it so that the filling is firm and flat to use it as a, a coffee table as well as a stool. Or you can dome the filling and make it um, fairly firm. And I'll go over later the different fillings and the way you can use uh, those foams to make the different types of finishes. Uh, but first of all, we're going to talk about the stool itself. Um, in an earlier uh, video, I showed how to fix legs onto these frames. Um, and so you will find on our website uh, details of how to put Queen Anne legs on. And that's what I'm going to demonstrate today. Because I also want to show you how to seal the wood on these legs so that when you polish them, the polish doesn't keep disappearing so that you have to renew it all the time and you'll get a better finish. So that's the first job we're going to do. Now, as you can see, all my legs are fixed on and I have a choice. This stool might be finished with the fabric finishing on the edge or it might come underneath the stool. If it's going to finish on the edge, then I'm going to have to do a nice polished finish on the base of the wood on my stool so that when you turn it over, it's not raw. So I've started off with a 220 grit trimite paper, which you can find on our website again. It's much finer and much better to use than, than sandpaper, and there is far less dust in the paper itself. And what you need to do is keeping in the direction of the grain, just make sure that there's no marks on the legs, or indeed, if you see here, there is a, a mark on the actual frame, and a light rub with the paper will actually remove that any marks like that. So you need to go over it completely like that. Um, I do then like to keep a vacuum cleaner handy and vacuum the whole of your area to keep the dust out. And then here's a well-used tack rag. Again, we sell them on our website. I've used this over and over again. You can keep turning it. It's slightly sticky. And what that does is it takes any surplus dust off. Now, don't press hard with it, but just lightly dust over the area that you're going to seal so that there isn't any dust on it. The finish that you get on your wood will depend on how clean and how dust free and how smooth it is when you start. It's only as good as the surface that you start with. So the first thing I'm going to do is, this is the shellac that we sell, it's a natural product and as you can see it looks white. It can settle so that there is just a white dust in the bottom and a clear liquid at the top. Don't worry if that happens. Give it a good shake and then take an old cup or a jar and just put a small amount in the bottom. You don't want to fill it up. You just want a small amount in the bottom. You use very, very little of this product. It will last you a long time. And then you need a very soft brush. As you can see, it's more like a, a powder puff, but it's very, very soft. And then taking the brush, just dip it into 
the very edge of that liquid and take off the surplus on the side. You don't need a tremendous amount. And then just brush very quickly going all the way round the leg, getting into all the little crevices. Make sure it's right up to the edge there. Now I've, I could have stained these legs um, and had them mahogany colour or oak colour, but in this instance I've decided to just leave them in a natural colour and seal them in their natural state. As you can see it's going very very slightly darker and if you want to know what colour your wood is going to end up when you've sealed and polished it, even if it were natural polish, just wet your finger and put it onto the wood and you will actually end up with the colour that you're going to get at the end of the day. Now I'm going to finish this and I'm also going to go around the bottom of this wood because as of yet I haven't decided whether or not I'm going to come underneath with my fabric or whether I'm just going to polish the base and make it look nice. So I'm going to go around with that and you can see I have to work very quickly and I'm working with the tip of my brush notice all the time. I'm just using the tip of it. Um, this is more or less dry already. That's how quickly it dries. So that's how quickly you've got to go round. You can't linger and you can't go back on the work. So get it right the first time. We are going to wire wall this down and put another coat on later. So don't worry if you actually have missed part of it. We'll sort that out later. As you can see, I've now put one coat of shellac on these legs, which in a few hours I'll be able to wire wall down and put a second coat on and I'll get a very good finish. But if you don't want to prepare your own legs, you don't want to start off with raw wood, we have quite a lot of uh, different styles of legs which can make your stool look quite different. And it does depend on the size of the stool, this is just our smallest frame, um, as to which legs you might choose. Um, you might even be doing it on a board if you're using foam. Couldn't do that with traditional work, but you may be able to with foam. And all of these legs will fit quite happily onto a board as well. We have this type of leg, which is um, a type of bum foot with a fancy turning on. And you can see it's already finished in colour. Another one might be, to keep the natural look again, is a bum foot, just plain but again with the finish already on it um, and this would fix um, quite happily with uh, just inserting a nut into the corner of the frame in that way and screwing this up from the bottom and that again is demonstrated on our website uh, in uh, our hints and tips section. Another type of leg you might like, which is a little more deluxe, is our reeded Shropshire, which already has a brass caster fixed on the bottom. Very smart, very upmarket, and gives you a totally different look again. This again is quite an upmarket type of leg, very, very sophisticated. Uh, this is our Erdig leg. A little bit taller, as you can see, would bring the stool up a bit higher. Maybe more suited to a slightly bigger frame. Again, it comes including the brass caster and completely finished. This comes in two different finishes. This is the antique finish. There's also the mahogany. This is an antique finished, uh, just a plain turned leg. And this one, in fact, um, comes in a natural colour and in a mahogany and as you can see that's quite a smart leg and would make a really nice footstool even one of this size slightly lower than these legs these are six inch Queen Anne's by the way I could have gone down to a four or right up to a nine or even a twelve if I wanted a tall table type stool if I'm looking for something more modern we also sell this type of leg 
which fits, as you can see, as a recess there, the frame would have gone into that leg. Take it down quite a bit lower, but a very, very nice finish and would be screwed on from the bottom after you'd finished the stool. So you don't have that bother of going round the leg on the corner, so that's quite a useful type of leg. And then you can have this sort of leg, which again would be screwed on afterwards. As you can see, it's got four points where it's screwed on, and that is screwed onto the frame in that manner. Uh, these legs would come out the side somewhat, as you could see or you could do them that way around, depending on how you want the stool to look. So that will give you quite a different look uh, for your stool. Now the first thing you want to do when you've got a your frame ready for working on or board, whichever you're working on, is find the centre of in both the front and back and the sides. And it's very important that you make sure that that is your centre. If you've got a square, you can use that to make sure that you've got that mark all the way round oops, on the frame. Because throughout putting your stool together, that point is going to be very important for centering fabric. and also all of the other materials onto the stool. And especially if you've got a pattern that's got to be centred or stripes or something like that when it comes to your top fabric. So make sure that that's very clear. Now if I'm going to take my fabric to this edge and leave the bottom exposed, what I can do at this point is fix a bottoming cloth. This is a, a fire retardant cotton and it's just cut very slightly smaller than the frame and what I'm going to do is take some small 3 8 or 10 mil fine packs and fix this on starting, as you can see I've put little nicks at centre points on four sides of my cloth. I've also only torn my cloth, I've not cut it because the thread will be extremely straight and as you can see by tearing it I've got a perfectly square piece. So I'll work at opposites so that I'm pulling it fairly tight making sure that's on quite tight. And I'll do two or three either side. I'm being very good and I'm not putting my tacks in my mouth to demonstrate to you so what would be quite easy for you to do is to spread them out like that. It's a bit like playing sticks when you were a child. Spread them out on a nice white piece of paper. They're about an inch apart or two and a half centimetres apart. So I've got three going that way. I'm now going to stretch it across that way. And I'll keep going in either direction and the last tacks that I'll put in will be on the corners. So I'll keep going in all directions.
I'm hitting them in just off, this is a very wide frame, it's a, a lovely frame to work on because it's very wide, um, but it's about an inch in from the edge. Or again in new money, two and a half centimetres in from the edge. So as you see, I'll finish that off going into the corners. And as you can see, we're now all the way around and the last one is in the corner. Now obviously that's not strong enough to allow somebody to sit on it, but what it does do, it gives you a nice finish underneath if you don't intend taking your fabric all the way round. When you take your fabric all the way round, you can put your bottoming on afterwards, but in this way, if I choose to just take um, my fabric to the edge there, then it's going to look quite nice on the bottom as well. Stools get picked up and people look at them. So the next thing I need to do now is to work out where I'm going to put my webbing on here. I like to use a good webbing and this is a good English webbing that um, we have manufactured for us. Um, it's 100% cotton and it's very strong. It will go on for years. Um, this is not a particularly big stool, so there's not a, a very big area. But I like to know where the edge of my wood is if I'm going to web this. And I can actually, I could use a piece of chalk, um, I can actually see by just rubbing that edge of that wood where it is. So I know I'm filling the area inside. Now, webbing, traditional webbing, should be put on no more than its own width apart. And this is uh, two inches wide, so therefore it shouldn't be closer or further away than two inches from the edge of that inside frame. And there shouldn't be more than two inches before the next one, and so forth. So I think if, when I work this out, that if I centre one that way and put one either side, that should fit perfectly well. Now, I'm making sure the end of my webbing is perfectly straight. Turning it over, I know where my wood is, it's there. And so I've got plenty of width, so I can actually keep that well in from the edge and still centre that onto the frame. Now the centre of my webbing is in line as you can see with my centre line so the idea is that I keep that well in line with the centre points. Now I'm going to change my tacks now to half inch improved or 13 mil improved. The 13 mil refers to the length of the shaft as you can see but the improved refers to the size of the head. So for putting webbing on, we want a nice large head as opposed to a fine, which is what the 10 mil were that we were using. There is some instructions on our hints and tips on how to put webbing on. So if you want to refer to that, you can. Basically, you're putting five tacks on either side. As you can see, there are two on the very edge at the top, one in the middle. And one either side of the centre, slightly below. You can see that there. There's the two below, there's the centre one, and there's the two above. Basically, that staggers the tacks. If you put the tacks in a straight line on a piece of wood, no matter how good the wood is, that can still split the grain because you're following the grain. So the idea is to stagger it. This forms a W. If I turn it up the other way, it forms an M. And that's the correct way to put tacks in. Some upholsterers have slightly different patterns, but the staggering method is still used. Now, I need to stretch this on, so I'm going to drop my roll of webbing onto the floor, 
and take a web strainer. Again, there are various types. We sell a couple of different types of web strainers. It's a matter of preference. And put a loop of it into the web strainer and you can adjust it by rolling the peg. Now again, I need to make sure I'm on that line. The centre of my webbing's on the line. This webbing is very useful because it does have a centre line. I just need to tighten that up just a little bit and I'm hooking that groove of the web strainer underneath the frame and trapped between the web strainer and the frame is this tail and that's what gives you the tension because it can't move because you're gripping it on. I don't know if you can hear that but that's how tight it needs to be and I'm pressing down quite firmly on this. This is where your magnetic hammer comes in because it gives you your third hand. I've got one hand holding that firm, stopping that tipping. I'm using my body on the strainer and then the magnetic side of my hammer to put the first hit in for my tack. make sure before you put this last tack in that that's still very tight now I can let go of my web strainer at this point I've got the three in it's important that it's the furthest two on the very edge so that you've got stretch all the way across the webbing so it's important that it's those two and the center so I put the center one in first and these two on the very edge. And now I can cut off enough to fold that over. Now I've got a choice. I can put in these last two, these two here now, or if I want to save on the amount of tax, um, or, if, or from another point of view, save putting too many tacks into a frame. The frame will be damaged with the amount of tacks you put in. Hence you don't want to put too big a tack, just enough to do the job. Now I can put those two in now, or I can wait until I've got a strong piece of hessian on there and use that, those two to hold the hessian on at the same time. So it's up to you what you want to do there. I prefer to use less tacks and put those last two in later, which also holds my hessian on. So I'll now continue to put in the two pieces either side, making sure that I've got that central to the gap, not central to the edge of the frame, because there's a certain amount of frame there that doesn't need, there it is there, that's the point at which it doesn't need any um, webbing. So it's going to be central to that. It'll be a slightly smaller than two inch gap, but it's better to have it smaller than bigger. So I'll now measure from here, from the centre out, from the centre out, to put where to put that piece of webbing, and the same on this side. And the reason you measure always from the centre out, not from the edge, is because you could well be um, upholstering a seat which narrows slightly at the back. And the strength of your webbing really is better if it's kept straight, that that's, makes it stronger. So you don't want to slant it with the back if you don't have to. So if you can keep it straight by me measuring the same measurements out, front and back, and keeping that straight, you'll have a stronger seat webbing. Now I've got the three pieces on in that direction, which is what I would term as my front and back. And now I need to put enough this way. In, one of the things you can do if you want to see where the inner edge of your stool is, you can just mark it like that. That's, that's actually where the gap starts there. So as you can see, really, I only need to put two pieces of webbing in this direction to make it work. We know where the centre line is here. So I think if I'm working that out, if I did an inch in from the centre line, I'd probably get that pretty much in the right place. 
there would be my two pieces of webbing. So I've measured an inch. I've, I've put crosses there where my webbing's to go, and I'll do the same at the other end. So that's an inch in from a centre. I've done that on this one. You know, obviously a larger stool would want more pieces than this. Now don't forget when you're doing your piece going in the opposite direction, your webbing in the opposite direction, you've got to thread it and weave it through the existing webbing. So I'll put this one on going under, over and under, and then the piece next to it will go over, under, over. And I'll put those two pieces on and that will complete the strength. Believe it or not, webbing is far stronger than a single board. If somebody jumped on this webbing, on this stool, they're very unlikely to break the webbing or tear it. That's you, you really would have to come down with a sharp object, a, a, quite a force to do that. If, however, it's a board, it is in danger of splitting in half if someone hits the middle very hard or jumps on it. So, in actual fact, a webbed stool is far stronger than a single piece of board. So, again... I'm going to fix this end on. Again, I need only, I shall only put the three tacks like that in it, and then I'll use the turnover to fix on my next layer. Now I just have to put the last one on there by threading that over and under like that. And then I'll fix that one on in the same way. Now we need, we've got our webbing on there, but we do need something to give that a proper base because of course our black lining there is just for show, it's not for strength. So the thing we use is a type of hessian. It's a 15 ounce hessian, uh, known in the trade as spring tarpaulin, because it actually goes over the springs. There are different types of hessian. Um, this is a 12 ounce hessian, can be used for a top scrim. And this is a linen hessian, um, commonly used, a number seven linen scrim, which is used as a top uh, Hessian that's over the top of hair. Now that wouldn't be strong enough for a base and this is perhaps not the best one either. Uh, a 10 ounce Hessian is often used. Again, I don't feel it's strong enough. If you want this to last, this is a nice 15 ounce Hessian with no gaps in the weave and it's very strong. Now I've cut it about an inch bigger overall than the area that I'm putting it onto. And again, I want to make sure I'm centering it, so I'll use the nick method and put the centre nicks into all four sides of this, and that will allow me to line up with my centre marks again, which is there and there. There. And that will get an even overhang all the way around. And then I'm going to fix this again with tacks. Now, where I'm fixing it just to the frame through that lining, these 3 eighths fine 
or 10 mil fine are perfectly adequate. Because this is a close weave, I can use a fine head. If this wasn't a close weave, I'd have to use an improved head. But a fine's perfectly adequate on this. And I can use those. If at any point I need to go through the double layers of webbing, as when I turn that over, I'll actually use some of my half inch again that I use to fix the webbing. And here I will actually be putting the two missing tacks from the webbing into there. And I'll use the bigger ones, but otherwise I'm just going to use a 3 8 fine. Now, this eventually will all be turned in, in this fashion, all the way around. But it's very difficult to get something taut and turn it in at the same time. So what you need to do is just get it taut in place first without turning it in. So I'm going to put just a few, about three or four inches apart, at opposites again, so I can pull it against itself. And I won't need them any closer than that. I'll do the same at the ends. The same at this end. And then just one in each corner. Just stretch that over. You can see by this that if you don't have a decent frame, you can have trouble when you're putting this many tacks in. Start some of my end ones there. I'll put them in now. But that now should be evenly stretched over. Okay, nice and taut. And now it's much easier to turn in the corners. Turn the corners in first. We'll just put one extra in there. Turn the corners in and turn that in. And then you can go around. You need, with counting the ones that are underneath, you need to have achieved putting one in about every inch, but you can see that one will count. So we only need to put one in there and there. And then the next one will be those two, which I'm going to use the two larger tacks, the ones that we didn't put in for the webbing. And if you remember, they're the two that are fairly close together, underneath the centre. And then there is one there, so we need only now put those two bigger ones in again. And you can see how you're saving on work, time, tax, and most important, you're saving your frame from having more tax than necessary. In there. And I'll carry on round there, I'll do the corners again, mitre the corners, and keep going, because it's all stretched on so I don't have to start in the middle, I can start anywhere I like really now to get that in place, and I'll finish putting that in place. Now, using different types of foam in different ways can give you a completely different feel to your stool, and for different uses. Now, you have to decide whether you want this with a smooth flat top so that you can put a tray on it, whether you want it domed, um, or whether you want it firm or fairly soft because you might want to put your feet on it and let your heels sink into it nicely. So, there are various foams that can be used, different densities, 
and the density is to do with the amount of foam compared to air. So the denser it is, the more foam there will be and the less air, so consequently it will be feel harder. But you can have soft types of foam that are high density, so they still feel quite soft, but they're, they're quite dense. Now, that means there's different ways that you can finish this stool. We're going to demonstrate one way today, but I'm just briefly going to tell you how you could do it. Now, if you wanted a very firm stool, and this would probably apply to a much larger one, you could use reconstituted foam, which as you can see is a lot, there's a lot of glue in it and it's made up of uh, small pieces of foam, but it's very, very firm. Now that would give you a very firm stool, but in order to make it feel nice, because it would be very, very hard, we could prepare it for you with already with a layer of soft foam on top. So you'd get this dense base which would stop it bottoming out, but a nice soft top. So that's one way you could do it, and then use polyester wrap on top of that just to give you a lining. Another way of doing it is to take a piece of foam and then a thinner piece of foam. It is about half an inch, centimetre, just over a centimetre, and you can wrap it around like that and as you see it gives you a curve instead of that square edge on your foam. And you can mix this as well by having a, a, a denser piece of foam with a softer one on top or in this instance this is the same type of foam, this is a medium density foam with a medium on top. And this quite this is two and a half inches and this is another half inch so we're about three inches depth altogether there so that's quite nice. Now whether that comes down over the edge or whether it stops there is going to be up to your design of your uh, stool. Now the one we're going to demonstrate today is we're just going to use the one piece of foam and I've got it half an inch bigger overall than the actual frame. The problem with foam on a frame is that as time goes on the foam sort of sinks back and seeps back like that off the edge of the stool and you've probably found that you've got dining chairs, uh, it's very common for this to happen and the foam over time shrinks back as it gets older and as it gets more used and then creates this hard edge and it doesn't look very nice and it certainly doesn't feel very nice. So there is a way of preventing that. So this is what I'm going to show you today, how to stop that seeping back over the edge of the frame. So first of all we need some spray adhesive, sort used in carpet laying um, and obviously we sell it for this purpose on our website. And it's a sort of contact adhesive, so basically we need an amount on the base and again some on the piece of foam itself. Now, it's not meant to, that's not meant to hold it on, but it does stop it slipping. It will be pretty fast after a while, once that glue starts to go white, as you can see, it's pretty well stuck. But what we want to do, we want to make that, you see I've got it just slightly bigger, so that when I push it in, you get that nice sort of uh, overhanging edge, just very, very slightly, because the foam's very soft and you can push it in with your fingers. I've got a piece of plastic on my workbench here, a piece of polythene, and that's there for a reason. And then what I've done is I've cut, in fact I've torn, pieces of calico. I've got two pieces the length of my stool. 
These are about three to four inches wide. It depends on the depth of your phone as to how wide these need to be. I think these are about four inches wide. Get my rule and I'll tell you what I've got these at. Yes, four inches. These are four inches wide. And I've got two pieces the width of my stool there. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one piece and I'm going to glue it on just there at that point onto the top of my foam. I suppose that's about three centimetres, one and a half inches in. And this is why you've got the pontine on the bench, because you don't want to get this everywhere. You certainly don't want to get it on your wood, and if you feel that you might, you could mask this up. And I'll just roll that over and stick that onto the foam. Now, I'm going to turn the stool over. As you can see there, that's it stuck to the calico. And if I pull the calico over, you can see it's only going to come that far down the foam. And what I'm going to do is use the spray adhesive on the foam. And on that fabric and just on the very edge of the wood of that frame and then I'll turn that around so it's away from me and then I'm going to apply quite a bit of pressure to that side of the stool evenly, as evenly as I can by pushing my hands down on it. And then lean it over. So you can see we've got that side stuck down and we've got a nice rounded edge. And what that will prevent that doing is pulling back off there. So now we need to do the other four sides in exactly the same way. If you get it too wet, it'll slip and it won't stick. And if you don't get enough glue on, it won't do the job either. So let it dry off just a little bit before you start turning it over. Um, you can see on the foam it starts to go a little white. I prefer to tear the pieces of calico because you get a smoother edge there when you tear it rather than cutting it. Also it's quite straight when you actually tear it. Again I'm going to turn that one over. spray this side. It's as well, um, your hands can get very sticky with this and what you need is a cloth beside you um, with some white spirit on to wipe your hands on so that you don't get this business. So I'm doing the same this side, making sure I've coated my calico side of my foam and the side of my frame. Just let that dry off a little bit because as I said if it's too wet it tends to slip and you don't want it to slip. If you're using the type of legs that screw on at this stage you can unscrew them and take them off and then you won't be in danger of getting glue or anything on the legs. Plus it is easier without the legs attached to lean on this and turn it over. 
So now I need to apply this pressure. side of the stool. Allow it to stick. And there you have your two sides. Again here you can see that's a little wet so it's slipping a bit so that's a lesson for you. But that gives you your nice curve and then you can do either end. If you've got a very large stool, leaning on it can be rather difficult. So you probably need to do it on the floor and stand up over it because if the stool's quite large, um, that would be very difficult to do on a bench or a table. Um, but that does give you a much better finish. And then also when you pull your fabric around this, you're not pulling individual pieces of foam to shape it. It should already be shaped. Um, so a bit of polyester over this and then your top fabric. And there's very little shaping to do because you've done it um, by pulling this over. If part way through you find that your polythene is getting rather sticky um, and uh, that your fabrics are sticking to it, just take some of your white spirit and clean off your piece of polythene. Um, otherwise you'll find that um, the next piece you do, it will actually stick to it. So the white spirit will just clean it off a little for you. And there we have the stool and feeling ready to put on polyester uh, wrap on that, which just needs to be laid over, and our top fabric. And that'll be the next part of our video, is finishing that off. We'll also finish off our legs as well in the next part of the uh, video.